I can't remember who sent me the link to this, but they sent a link, I think, to an uh, AliExpress listing for this heated hair, uh, heated hair dryer, this heated clothing dryer. It's a coat hanger that basically puts out hot air down the way uh, for drying just individual clothes. And it's kind of, it's presented as being a sort of travel accessory. You stick it in a bag and take it with you and it can dry shoes and it can dry jackets and clothing. And I don't normally buy from AliExpress because the... It sometimes gets a bit tricky shipping to Isle of Man. Uh, sometimes they let you place an order for something and then when you go to pay and it says what's the address, it doesn't kind of give you an option for Isle of Man, which is just puts me off using AliExpress a lot. So instead I went on eBay and typed the same typed the same keywords in. Yeah, I'm still all over the place, by the way. Still a bit under the weather, but getting there. Um, the recent burst of flu, I think it was flu, not really sure. But this is described as portable electric folding clothes hanger dryer drying rack travel laundry rack. And you get two options. Uh, you get the option of just the unit like this as it is, or you also get the option of a set of these with it, which are extending sort of foot dryer things for, well, boot dryer, boot or shoe dryers. Ideal for trainers, I'd think. Uh, so this one was actually in Canadian dollars, uh, which equated to about £16.56. And as it comes, there's a couple of little catches here that you can push in. It comes sort of as a sort of flat packable device. So you, you've got the two shoe accessories. If you want to take them, you've got this and then you've got the unit itself and it's 1.5 metre flex. I shall uh, put these out of the way at the moment. I shall click these back on. Oh, I'll show you beforehand. It takes the air in at the top. And it puts air out these channels here and also this slot at the bottom so it sort of generally puts an airflow over the whole area of the, the garment. These just slide on and click. And the power consumption, uh, it's got a label on it. It's got a label that says 150 watt. Let's put that to the test, shall we? I should mention if the hook doesn't look very generous, the, the hook folds down. It's got a little track and then it folds down into the base here. If it doesn't look very generous, like it's just going to fall straight off your, whatever you're hooking it on, it's because it's uh, malformed. The injection moulding here, they've not injected enough plastic in, so it's ended up before it got to the end of the actual mould. So this hook should have been longer, but isn't. I wonder if should, uh, I could try contacting the manufacturer about that and see if they'd send me a hook, but I get the feeling it wouldn't result in much luck at all. But there's no harm in trying. It came with a death adapter, which is one of those, uh, it's one of the crappier ones. It doesn't even have screws through inside. It's got this strange alloy that isn't, uh, yeah, not, if you have these things, they've got so many <coughs> defects, I'd recommend just bin these things. If you want to use it with an adapter, buy one from a local supplier so you get something compliant. One of the worst things about these ones is that many of them will let you plug the earth pin of a appliance into the live receptacle of the thing, which uh, it means that if kids are playing about it, it you know, aside from the fact to defeat safety shutters, it's it just means that there's lots of options for plugging stuff in wrong. So don't uh, don't use these; they're a terrible idea. They look great when you've had something electrical explode in them, though. Still got to feature that particular item. Right, let's uh, plug this in. But I can already tell what sort of characteristic characteristic it's going to have. So I'll bring the flickery hop in. And I know from looking up the end of it already that I can see what looks like these inside. And these are a very common heater in products like this. They're PTC ceramic heaters with a sort of ceramic core inside here and then sort of heat spreader fins. So when I plug this in, I'm expecting the power to actually peak initially. It's not going to turn on. I plug it in, it says it's drawing zero, which uh, in the case of the Hoppy, is it actually going to run? Usually means it's uh, got a, such a, it's using a capacitive dropper, but because there's no load, it tends to not see anything at all. So if I push this button, it started up, it's showing 353 watts, it's dropping down 200 and, well, 190, 174, 153, it's down to 140. It's down to 130. And I can feel hot air flowing out. A lot of it's coming out the middle bit. But I can feel I can feel the flow out the ends as well. 
And I suppose ultimately, once it's actually got a garment there, it's going to spread the heat out about a bit. So it seems to have stabilised about 130 watts. And it is a PTC heating element in here. Power factor shows us 0.9. If I press the button again, it's turned the heater off. The power factor's gone to 0.3, which because it's either a switch mode or it's a capacitive dropper, and it's the fan inside, and the power's dropped to 1.9 watts, 23 milliamps. Which kind to me, that kind of suggests a little switch mode supply. But we'll find out when we open it up, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So when you turn this on, it initially goes into the standby mode. You can push the button once and it'll start heating. Push it again, it'll go into cold mode. If you start the heating cycle, it will run for about three hours at the heating cycle and then it'll just switch down to the cold mode and it'll cool down, but it'll just keep the fan running to ventilate the clothing. So let's get these off and uh, let's open it up. Let's take a look at the... Initially, when I got the shoe adapters, the shoe adapters are the type that uh, you can pull it out like this and then shape it. It's kind of like it's a, it's like a flexi strut so you can actually shape it to go into your footwear. And uh, one of the things I couldn't tw twig initially was this rubber bung. I was thinking, is that... What's that for? I, I couldn't work out what it was for initially. And I realised afterwards that it's when you put this on, you put the rubber bung in the bottom vent so that all the air comes out purely from the shoe ones because otherwise the airflow out them would be greatly reduced. So that is just a little bung for this bottom outlet here. Bottom outlet. So what am I expecting inside? The fan, the PTC heaters, and a, a simple circuit possibly containing an ultra simple switchboard power supply. Uh, I'm going to need... Um, am I going to be able to even reach in there? Nope. I'll use this one. It's those recessed screws. Oh, is this even going to work? Well, there's one coming out. And two, so <coughs> I could find, I could think uses for this. It's probably just about the right temperature for drying footwear. My washing machine does uh, have a trainer cycle. You can put trainers in it, and it'll just instead of tumbling in the washing machine, it'll just do a sort of continual centrifugal effect where it just throws them against the outside the drum while it paddles them through the water. But usually, I just uh, put them in a cardboard box afterwards, and it's side and point a fan heater in them to try and dry it. This would be quite useful. I don't know if it's going to be how effective it's going to be in doing that. Ooh, righty-ho, what's holding this together? I got all the screws out. Is this one still holding on? No, it's, it's not holding on. Is it clipped together as well in some way? Or is it this little plastic thing at the top? Is it doing something? Don't know. Ah, right. There is something I wasn't expecting already. The circuitry in here. There's an inductor. That makes me... No, there's another inductor, and that's, that's just filtering. This makes me think that the circuitry in here is a switching supply, because this capacitor is too small to power the fan, and a relay, so it will be a switching supply, a buck supply possibly, just based around the little inductor in here. Let's uh, zoom down in this a bit. And uh, I shall place it down there, and I'll try and focus. This is where all, the focus always goes wrong, so I'll hold it rock steady while I do that. Uh, so I'm seeing, yeah, the inrush limiting resistor here. I'm seeing uh, the metal oxide resistor here. These are probably filter components. There'll be a rectifier in the back. There's the inductor. Um, I'd guess they'll be using a transistor to switch the power to the fan. Is this a thermal fuse, or is that just... Oh, that's that's probably... I'm not sure. Let's take it to bits further. There is an element of clipping together going on here. There is a multicolour LED in here as well. Key, ground, and two colours, red and blue little common connection down here. The fan is a fairly standard looking little computer fan. 
in the top here. Right, I'm going to explore this and see what I can find, and then I shall report back with my findings. Okay, so that makes sense. Before I show you the schematic, I'm going to show you the sort of exploded rest of it. It's very modular. I wondered why this wire came round here initially, and the answer is, it's the switched wire, it switches in the neutral, and it's got what appears to be a thermal fuse, or thermal cutout, inside. I don't know if this is a single uh, Acrim one, or it's a bimetallic, sort of resettable one, but it's there just in case everything else goes wrong, just a, an extra layer of protection. Everything is so modular, this little circuit board here, for instance, one of the button, and the LEDs, just clicks in, it's quite neat. The heater is a bit odd. It's not what I was expecting. I mean, it's kind of what I was expecting. This is the sort of what I'm used to with PTC heaters. It's uh, If you look at these heaters, they're basically a supply going in. Let's see if I can rip the end off this one. I don't know if you're going to see this, actually. Mm, you may or may not see that, but down inside there is... Uh, sort of basically what's visible here, you can see the sort of crystal. Let's zoom down just a little bit, so without going too far, just to enhance things a bit. But it's a layer of that ceramic material with a conductive layer on both sides. In this case, they've then put captain tape around it and they've wedged it in with a couple of electrodes um, going on to these terminations. And the advantage of this one is it's kind of, it's kind of waterproof. That was thoroughly glued together. That was, took quite a lot of effort to get off in a previous investigation. This one, though, is different. Uh, this one has the two sections of crystal, and they are effectively wired in parallel. But the heat sink fins are bonded directly onto the surface, and they're actually carrying the current across. So, in the case of the, the circuitry, we've got the feed coming in, and it goes to this end. So this end of the stack is live. But it also loops through this wire, to this end and it's kind of riveted on so both ends of this are live with the middle one the switch to feed that goes via the thermal cutout uh, going to the middle so it powers them from the uh, either powers each of these uh, ceramic PTC elements from either side and they are self-regulating elements they have a they're based on a material I've got a tiny little bit of it here uh, they're based on a material that when current passes through it, it has a specific resistance and as the temperature gets higher that resistance will gradually increase until it reaches an equilibrium so it's designed to act as a self-regulating element let's uh, zoom no let's not zoom back out let's stay zoomed in the fan is a standard little 12 volt fan just wedged into the top here it's a jxf that's more or less it it's got a little channel for the wires it's all it's all very neat I think this uh, has someone spent a lot of time developing this. It's quite smart. Will it go back together afterwards? So that's it. We've got the the fans got the twelve volt feed. We've got the little ribbon cable coming to the button and the LEDs, and we've got the heavier cables coming to the heating element. So let's bring in the circuit board, and we shall investigate this. I will have to zoom out now just a little bit. Let's uh, zoom like that. And I'll also focus down onto that. That's a good idea. I could have turned it upside down so that all the text is the right way up, but if you're used to reverse engineering schematics like this, you may find that you tend to uh, find there's just the right way up for the schematic, and this is the, the right way up for me. Uh, you'll also notice the text is back to front in this bit. This is because I've flipped this over, so all these components correlate. For instance, that's the... Um, the connectors here, there's a blank connector position, uh, as almost as if they've got a position for two fans. Strange. Or something else, maybe. Oh, I know what that is. That may be for one, of, there's an option for this of an ionizer. Um, and I did notice the air outlet port in the bottom of this has this little channel here with a port, and it does suggest that it's designed to take a module in here, probably on these two holes, this position here, and have a little ionizer uh, that just basically, well, it's the typical Japanesey, Chinesey type product. There's an ionizer in everything. It's that's one of the that's still a buzzword. So the supply comes in and live goes over to here. And the live loops straight back out and goes to the elements. The elements are actually live all the time, and it's the neutral that's switched in this case. The neutral goes to here, and it also 
goes round here, and it is the negative for the whole circuitry. It's uh, going right through this, uh, through to that voltage regulator. It's going along. It's going to the output connectors. Yeah, it's <clears throat> the main negative rail. That's that. That's all we need to know here. The the circuitry is not isolated. It does generate 12 and 5 volts, but it's not isolated from the mains. They're just referenced to, in this case, the neutral connection. So, excuse me, what? <coughs> still a bit throaty at the moment. The, there's a resistor here, which is basically, it's a 10 ohm resistor, very common, brown, black, black, 1, 0, and 0 is a multiplier, so there's no multiplier, it's just 1, 0, 10 ohms. That is used for two things. It limits the inrush current, and also it uh, acts as a fuse if something goes terribly wrong. Then there's a metal oxide resistor cross here, which is this blue thing here. That clips any voltage spikes, just protects the circuitry. And then rather cheaply, uh, well, first of all, there's another. There's this big yellow uh, Class X2 capacitor, which is going between here and here, so that's just bridging live and neutral. Then there's just a single diode. That's a bit cheap, but you know what? The current take, the only current that's going through this diode is for the fan and the um, circuitry, so it's it's not that much anyway. Um, and so it's feeding the switch switching power supply, but it does so via... So it comes through this diode, it goes through this capacitor, not through this capacitor, it gets smoothed by this capacitor, then there's this inductor here, and this is just filtering, and then there's another capacitor here. So it's a diode capacitor, an inductor for separation, then a capacitor. This is to mainly to stop noise going back out onto the mains wiring from this unit. And then here's where I tripped up. IAFCJ. IAFCJ. It's a little five pin switching chip. Not sure what it is. Couldn't find any reference to that number at all. But it has a selection of uh, components associated with it for detecting voltage, uh, pre scaling the voltage on a sense input, presumably. I would guess this is the sense input. There's the positive. The negative is via this diode. And there's an inductor, a big fat inductor here. And this is the bit that's doing the regulation via this component, which is basically going to allow little pulses of current through that inductor. And then it's going to check what the voltage is at the other side from... It's quite hard to describe. It is one of these cost-optimised... Uh, and design optimized things where they've got the super low pin count. But suffice to say, it's got these support components. It's using that inductor. The use of the inductor like that, if you were to just uh, stick an inductor across a battery or something like that, it wouldn't just, unlike a resistor, current wouldn't just flow instantly. The inductor, because it's got a large magnetic mass, <clears throat> It takes a while for the current to build up. So they use that as a means to actually kind of regulate how much current can flow through. So by turning on pulses, it effectively acts as a sort of controllable resistor, I suppose, really, but with the low, without the losses of an actual resistor. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. I didn't, as I say, I didn't come up with that IAFCJ, that number. I would li I've liked to see the schematic. I couldn't find a similar one either. But the end result is that there's another capacitor here, this one here, which uh, ends up with about 12 volts across it, which is going straight out for the fan. And the fan is switched to a transistor, so the 12 volts is for the fan, but then there's a 5 volt regulator here. I didn't measure the voltage, it could be 3.3, but um, I'm going to guess it's 5, because that would be the one of the most common ones. And it then feeds the microcontroller, and this is just the generic Padauk type 8 pin microcontroller. How did I get fluff all over that circuit board? Or is it just supplied pre fluffed or scratched? No, it's going to be fluff, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> so, this uh, microcontroller is connected, to, uh, it's got an input coming from this four way connector. So, this is going to the little button panel in the front. We've got a 103, that's 10 zero and three zeros, that's 10k resistor. So, it's being used as a pull-up resistor for the button. So when you push the button, this pin will go negative because this is the negative pin here that's going to bridge to. And these are the two outputs that are going straight to the microcontroller that control the red and the blue LED and the resistors are mounted locally on the circuit board for that. 
when the microcontroller, uh, when the unit's powered up, it's in standby mode. So the only thing that will be powered is the microcontroller. And it will be looking for attention at that button. And when you press the button, <coughs> it does uh, two things. It turns on this transistor here via this 472. That's 47 uh, and a multiplier of two. So that's 4720. So that's uh, 4.7 thousand ohms. So it turns this transistor on, which then... Uh, powers the fan. The fan is across this connector. I'm noticing that this other connector position here is actually kind of reversed. Hmm. Uh, there's a, a diode across that as well. Now, the reason for the diode is protection for the transistor. If you have, say for instance, if you've got a 12-volt supply and you have a coil, like a relay, and then a transistor switching to the zero-volt rail, then when that coil's turned on, the current starts flowing, but when you turn the coil off, it's basically going open circuit. And as the magnetic field collapses, you've got a reverse voltage spike. So by putting a diode in reverse across that coil, it will clamp that spike and it protects the transistor from a, a reverse voltage. So that's what that little diode's there for. It just looks like a 1N4148, a standard diode. There's also another one down here because <clears throat> same resistor, probably the same transistor, but what it's doing is it's switching these two pins here, which are the relay, the relay coil must be at this end. And this is for switching the heater. The fan's quite a low load, so it can just be switched directly. But in this case, we've got the relay being switched. And again, the there's a back EMF uh, suppression diode across that coil. And it switches these two connections here, which do come quite close here, actually. So when it's off, there's going to be quite a high potential difference across there. But they have at least nudged, they've shaved the tracks in there. Well, I guess maybe they were just like saying, oh, it's what we've got. So uh, when the, you push the button initially, it brings on that uh, transistor for the fan, it brings on a transistor for the relay, and it starts heating and the fan starts blowing and running air through it. And it'll change the colour of the LED as well to show it's active. I think it shows red for heating. Then... After three hours, the microcontroller will have an internal oscillator for the timing and it will have what are called nested loops. You basically, you just have a a very simple loop with, you, it can either be some actual functional instruction, instructions inside scanning the button to see if anything's happening or it can, if it's a, just a sort of dead loop, it can just be a, a couple of knobs, no operations in the, the software. And it basically goes through that loop and then it ends. But that loop is inside another loop, so then that multiplies it. And by stacking, nesting loops, by stacking them, you end up with a, a controllable delay. And in this case, they've stacked them to create a sort of three-hour delay. Um, and after three hours, this transistor will be turned off, the relay will click off, the heater will go off, but the other fan the transistor will be left on. And uh, you can also switch manually between that. If you turn it on and you just want cool air blowing through it, you can press the button to start it and it will go, the red LED will light go hot. And you can press it again and it will go blue and it will go to the, the cold fan mode, just to fan its own. And then you can press it again to think the LED goes off. And uh, at that point, the unit is just in standby mode. And although it will still be generating the 12 volt supply, the only thing that will be active at that point is the microcontroller. That's fundamentally it. Yeah, so the only bit I can't really elaborate on here is this bit, which is a bit annoying because uh, it's actually got quite a few support components, but I'm guessing that the majority of them, well, there's a, that looks there, that will almost certainly be uh, to clip spikes, perhaps? Could that be, uh, oh, not sure. This is just speculation. I'm not sure if it will be a fixed voltage one or it will have the reference input coming from feedback via this little link and that that uh, decoupling capacitor goes down to this resistor. Maybe this is a Zener diode. Maybe it's as soon as that starts conducting, then it actually provides a signal back and says you've reached the sort of voltage required. Then it shuts down standby until the voltage drops lower than that again. A little bit of hysteresis. It's very straightforward and it's quite nicely made. Um... It's very modular. It looks like a lot of the work has been of actually building it has been done inside the unit itself. It's not just been pre-wired and then assembled. I'm just going to bring this back up here and 
focus to better height. There we go. <clears throat> so um, yeah, it's a it's a nice enough design. The only thing that's a bit strange is the uh, the it's a bit creepy is how close the two connections come and the where the relay is switching. But that's uh, just how it is. Um, and it does put out a, a decent warm flow of air. Ultimately, that will be again be self-regulating because if the fan was running slower, the fan was running faster. Because the PTC heat elements do just self-regulate, all they do is compensate for that. I suppose in a way, this unit probably operates at 110 volts as well because there's nothing there that should really... It says 220 volts, but I bet it would operate at 110 just by virtue of the fact the switchboard power supply would still generate those 12 volts and, and 5 volts for the control circuitry. And the only difference is that the uh, the heaters here would uh, just end up not going quite a high resistance. They'd still be trying to put out as much uh, heat as possible to, you know, they'd be passing as much current as possible to reach their target heat. So it's quite neat. It's quite neat indeed. I couldn't tell you how good it is at drying things, particularly things in my size. Um, I suppose I could try that, but uh, that's that faulty hook is slightly annoying. Well, another thing that's worth mentioning in the design is just things like, you know, this, the, the button just clips in like this. It's got the, there's a little round cutout for the LED to shine through to give a nice round uh, dot of light. There's the square for the switch, and then just this just physically clicks in, and it's loose enough that that allows the button to still be pressed. It's quite neat. A clever little design, and uh, quite fun to take to bits, and now I'm going to put it back together again. So yeah, smart little device. A couple of extra notes about the design here. It clips together really easily, and the fan uh, area seems to have extra depth included so that they can accommodate uh, various depths of fans, and it just seems to almost be held in by a little channel for the cable itself for the fan that goes up the side so it can fit in snugly and just it also supports the fan at a specific height. The little circuit board I was talking about that just clips in, you've got the cabling coming through from the little thermal cutout that goes down the side of the heater block and this little circuit board here just slides across like that and goes click, that's it, it's just in position and all it needs is ultimately to be in position until the lid's put on. Likewise, in the base here, to keep this circuit board out of the way, um, they've got a really neat little angled, the way they've moulded it, it's been moulded from this direction point down the way, but using angled, I don't channels, I'm not sure if you're even going to see this, if I point the light down there, you'll see that there's a sort of angled channel in there, let's zoom up in that a little bit, and see if I can show you it. There's a little angled channel in there that the edge of the circuit board is cut to fit into that, you can see the tip of the, the corner going through it and they've got one on the other side and then because it's moulded from this direction the hole for the screw is also in this direction so it then sits down vertically onto the edge of the angled circuit board and locks it in place it's very neat it's clearly been designed well the design has evolved I guess really from the earliest versions they put out it just seems really quite slick and everything just goes together quite easily. It just clips and screws together. It's neat. It's a very smart little device. Well worth taking to bits. <laughs>